Hello everyone. In this video, I want to show you how to create uh, our first uh, Android mobile app, the Flashlight app. I want everyone to focus on the development process by using this app. In this lecture, you could meet some uh, programming codes. Understanding those programming codes is not required for this lecture. We will have a, a particular lecture for programming, for Android programming, a few weeks later. Let's get started in developing our first Android mobile app. Once you launch Android Studio, you should be able to see the interface like you see seeing on this screen. Click Start a new Android Studio project. This is the new project wizard. The software will show you some required steps when you create a new application. First, we want to give this application a name. You can give it any name. For this case, let's call this flashlight app. Next, you want to create a company domain. This looks like a, a web address, right? Actually, this web address is not for general users. This is for Google Play Store to identify your mobile app. So you must create a, a unique company domain for this box. You can use any web address because this is not for the general user. The general user like you and me will not type the domain name to find out the mobile app. This is only an ID number for Google Play Store to identify from which developer this app is submitted. So as long as the domain name is unique, you can create any domain for your mobile app. Let's say I want to create my domain. Let's call mine is uh, studio.busa.com. This will be my domain name for the mobile app. When I submit my mobile app to Google Play Store, Google will remember this unique ID number. In the future, if a new developer wants to use the same domain name to submit his or her mobile app, Google will prevent him or her from doing that because this domain is taken by me already. In this class, I don't ask everyone to submit your mobile app to Google Play Store. But when you do, please remember you want to give a, a unique company domain name for your mobile app. Next, the wizard will show you where this mobile app will be saved. In your computer, you could have a, a particular project location. But uh, no matter where this location is, the project is always stored in the Android Studio Projects folder. So please remember, the mobile app project will be stored in this folder, Android Studio Projects folder. For each particular project, Android Studio will create uh, a new folder to hold uh, all the materials related to this project. But no matter where it is saved, it will be under Android Studio projects. In the future, if you want to find some files or materials for this project, you always go to Android Studio projects folder first. Or you can search Android Studio projects to find uh, your mobile app. Next, we want to click uh, Next. Here we, we can choose uh, if we want to develop a mobile app for a phone app, a template app, or some variable app, smart TV app, and so on. In this class, we only focus on the mobile phone and the mobile template app development. In the future, if you want to develop some uh, variable app, such as uh, apps for Google Glasses, smartwatches, 
you can choose a wearable or smart TV and so on. Let's check phone and the templates, this option. Under phone and the template option, we need to specify minimum SDK. SDK represents software development kit. It is the tool set for developing certain software. In this drop down list, you can choose the minimum SDK API. API represents application programming interface. This is a set of uh, existing software provided by Google Android, which means if you connect to the API, you don't have to develop a mobile app from the ground. You can use some uh, existing service from a Google service. Let's say if I want to choose API 14, Android 4.0, this means my mobile app can only be used by mobile devices that is running Android 4.0 or above. Any device that is below Android 4.0 will not run my mobile app. So when you choose the minimum SDK API, you must consider for which users you want to provide the, the mobile app for. Let's say you provide a, a very simple mobile app. You want your customer group to be as large as possible. Then you choose a lower API number, API 9. That means uh, the mobile app that is running Android 2.3 system is still being able to use your mobile app. If you have a, a lot of uh, animations, interaction with the mobile users, or you have uh, security concerns, then you will choose a larger API number. So the mobile app is only focusing on the advanced Android system. Let's choose API 14, which is a, a very popular minimum SDK in the market. And then we want to click Next. Here we want to choose an activity. An activity is just a, a blank page. On this blank page, we can design any uh, image, button, animations, and so on. If you have a particular need for a mobile app, let's say you want to develop a, a mobile game that is using geolocation data. The mobile game is very similar to Pokemon Go. You want to track down where the user is, then you can choose the Google Map activity. If you want to create a mobile app for templates PC, then you can choose the master detail view. In this case, we want to choose the empty activity. We want to use an empty page, and then we want to add the flashlight turn off and on button on it. Let's choose empty activity, and then click next. Here we want to give a name for this particular page. Users will not see this activity name at all. This is only for developers to differentiate one page from others. So we can keep main activity. We don't have to create a new name. And then click finish. It could take a while for Android Studio to get ready. After the software is ready, you should be able to see an interface like you are seeing on this screen. On the left, you have the list of the project. It shows all available resources for development. In the middle, you should have the development interface for the developers. If you cannot see the project list, as you can see on the left, you can click the project button in the upper left corner to open or close the project list. Let's click the project button here to open the project list. Before our development, I want you to focus on two folders. First, RES folder. Second, Java folder. These are the two most important folders 
for our development. RES folder represents resources. It has uh, all the pictures, videos, texts, um, other materials for mobile app development. Usually we'll look at uh, the layout and the uh, drawable folders. Under layout, it has the activity or the pages we just uh, created. If you double click on activity underscore main, you should be able to see this empty activity or empty page. We'll change the user interface later in this lecture. But remember, if you want to change the user interface for the users, always go to RES and then open Layout, click the little triangle to open it, and then choose the page you want to modify. This is the first important uh, folder. Next, under RES, you have a drawable. Drawable should have uh, all the pictures you want to use in the mobile app. So let's say I want to create a logo for my mobile app. Then I should save logo picture into the drawable folder. In this case, we don't have any picture, so the drawable is currently empty. Remember, if you want to show pictures to your users, always save the pictures into drawable folder. Next, let's take a look at the, the, the Java folder. Java folder has all the programming codes. Let's open the little triangle next to Java. Under Java, you should have uh, three folders. We only focus on the one without test or Android test. We only focus on this one. If you click uh, the little triangle next to the first folder, you should be able to see the main activity file. If you double click on main activity, it will show you some programming code. This programming code are the codes that can control the user interface. We'll develop the codes in this file later in this lecture. Remember, the Java folder has all the programming codes that can control the user interface in the mobile app. During the development process, we only look at the Java and the RES folders. These are two most important folders in the Android development process. Okay, let's go to the RES folder. We want to design the user interface for the mobile users. Open RES and then click uh, the little triangle next to layout and then double click activity underscore main. This is the user interface the user should be able to see. Let's zoom in a little bit. You can click on the plus sign to zoom in. Let's click uh, Hello World. And then you can see Hello World is selected, right? Press the delete button on your keyboard. We want to remove Hello World. Hello World is given by Android Studio by default. We don't need it, so let's remove it first. Next, you want to look at uh, the palette panel, as you can see here. You want to choose Toggle button. Click on Toggle button, hold it, and then drag it to the developer interface, and then drop it off. This is the button that can control the background color, right? If you click on the button, the background color will turn white, so the user will get more light. Next, I want you to go to the property panels on the right, and then find uh, the ID box. Here, currently, the ID box is toggle button, right? Let's change toggle button to light switch. Let's give a new ID number to this button, light switch. Because Android is a case sensitive language, notice that S is in uppercase. Let's name it light switch and then save the project. 
Basically, we have uh, finished the user interface design part. Let's save the project. Let's click the Save All button to save what we have been doing. Next, we want to go to the main activity, this file, main activity. If you cannot find uh, this file, please go to Java folder. Click on the little triangle next to Java and then click uh, the first folder under Java. Not the one with Android test or test. The one without any Android test or test. Choose the first one. And then you will find the main activity, right? Double click on this, this file. Under this file, I want you to keep the first statement but uh, remove everything else from import to the end of this file. Select uh, all of them, keep the first package statement, and then remove everything else. Next, please go to eCollege. And then under Week File link, click uh, item number 4, Flashlight App Source Code. Right click on this link, and then choose Open link in new tab. Then you should be able to see a collection of uh, programming codes, right? Let's select this codes. Select all of them from uh, import to the last uh, curly brace. Let's select them and then copy, make a copy, and then go back to Android Studio and then paste the codes into Android Studio. Even though these codes are very new to everyone, but uh, the logic is very easy to understand. If you scroll down to the if else statement, actually the programming codes made a decision based on if the button is turned on or off. If it is on, then we want to change the background color to black. Otherwise, we want to turn it to white color. How does the programming code understand it should control the toggle button we just added on the user interface? Let's take a look at the programming code. In the middle, you should be able to say toggle button, right? This is what we just added into the user interface. Next to toggle button, we have r.id.light switch. R represents resources. This blocks of code tells Android Studio that go to the resource folder and find the button with light switch as ID number. And then apply the programming code here to the button with light switch as ID number. By doing this, we can control the buttons that the user can see. Once the user click on the button, we can use the programming codes here to provide the corresponding service. We can change the background color according to the user's click on the button. Now let's save the project. Next, you can use the approaches I introduced to you on eCollege to test this mobile app.